How's it going, guys? So this question assesses a factoid that is overlooked by many students, okay? You pull students off the street, they'd be like, oh, wow, like didn't know that, okay? Even if you think you already know the answer to this question, I'm gonna give you some important uh, details regarding some of these other answer choices real quick as well. So before we get started, I will be an asshole like I usually am and tell you to subscribe to my channel, I really appreciate it. Give the video a like, really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, Melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical, link is down below. Find me on Telegram, recently created Telegram group and channel, links down below. Now hopping into the actual question here, 42 year old woman with Graves disease, seizure type episode at home, ECG shows atrial fibrillation, our irregularly irregular rhythm with absence of P waves. Our echo is normal. Ejection fraction should be 55 to 70. Uh, the purpose of doing this is to say we do not visualize a left atrial neural thrombus which could be relevant in the setting of AFib, which could cause a stroke, TIA, retinal artery occlusion, or even a potential seizure if we have a thrombus launching off to the brain. So in this case, embolus instantly we know is wrong, okay? So the CT of the head shows a ring-enhancing lesion. This is meant to sound buzzy. The USMLE actually wants to be buzzy in this case, all right? So we see the CT here. We see uh, some sort of lesion. We say, not really sure, but let's just look at our, look at our answer choices. We'll go backwards. Toxoplasmosis, wrong fucking answer. Now, for just to come right out of the gates, you need to know that ring-enhancing lesion does not strictly apply to toxo, let alone the fact that they don't say anything about her having cats. They don't say that she's eaten pork, under uh, undercooked pork. They don't say anything about travel. So it's not that toxo is impossible, but it's less likely in this case, all right? They don't mention fever, nothing like that. Neurocystercosis, also wrong fucking answer. This will always be in the setting of travel, okay? They'll say recent travel to EG, Mexico. They can show you a single lesion like this on head CT. They can show you cystic lesions in the ventricles, a Swiss cheese appearance to the brain. Neurocystocercosis is going to be tinea solium. That's a tapeworm, a cestode. And uh, you treat with albendazole, okay? Toxoplasmosis, you treat with sulfadiazine, pyrimethamine, and prophylaxis for toxo is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole. Why don't we stay focused on the actual question? How does that sound? So malignancy is our correct answer here. Very fucking high yield as your factoid that you know that autoimmune diseases increase the risk for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. It doesn't matter which autoimmune disease it is necessarily. They could have given you dermatomyositis. They could have said 44-year-old woman with SLE. Okay, they could have said 44-year-old woman, 43-year-old woman with vitiligo. Autoimmune disease increases the risk for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, especially primary CNS lymphoma, all right? AIDS patients as well, if they give you an immunocompromised patient, patients, patient who's on chemo, radiotherapy, increased risk for non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Very fucking important. Ring-enhancing lesion does not just apply to toxo. It's also malignancy, can be primary, can be metastases, can also refer to abscesses. So, let me just be real fucking quick hopping through some of the other answer choices here, give you some high yield points. So glycosamine and glycan deposition, distractor, but obviously wrong fucking answer. This would be in Graves' disease when you have uh, the exophthalmos, the protosis. So if they ask you for why the eyes stick out, okay, why you have protosis, it's glycosamine and glycan deposition in the extraocular muscles and also in a pretibial myxedema, glycosamine and glycan deposition. You give steroids, IV methylprednisolone to treat the exophthalmos. Embolus, as we already said, wrong, wrong fucking answer. We have, we don't have a left atrial mural thrombus. Cold abscess, uh, obvious distractor. When students don't know, they choose weird sounding shit. Uh, cold abscess uh, could apply to job syndrome. That's hyper IgE syndrome where it's faded, the mnemonic. So abnormal facies, staphylococcal cold abscesses, retained primary teeth, hyper IgE, dermatologic abnormalities such as eczema. Very fucking low yield on USMLE. I don't want you remembering what I just said. Okay, that sounds weird, I know, but I'm just saying cold abscess applies to job syndrome, uh, faded, hyper IG syndrome. It's not going to show up in your USMLE. Don't worry. I'm just mentioning that for the sake of completion here. Amyloidosis. This uh, is high yield for multiple myeloma. That is the highest yield cause of amyloidosis on USMLE. Okay. There's a myriad of causes, but for US simile, we're talking your fucking points here. You need to know multiple myeloma causes renal and cardiac amyloidosis, okay? It's a nephrotic syndrome uh, for renal, and it will cause an S4 heart sound diastolic dysfunction um, when you have multiple myeloma, okay? You can get amyloidosis of the pancreas as well in type 2 diabetes over the long term. So your take home for this question is 
autoimmune disease increases the risk for non-Hodgkin lymphoma, uh, especially primary CNS lymphoma. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.